as always, welcome to our worship this week. A week that, according to my weather forecast, is going to end better than last week did, certainly here in the UK. Uh, If you regularly join us from other parts of the world, do tell us where you are and what's happening in your part of the world. We're still seeing well-known Bible stories through the eyes of the disciples, and this week is what we call the Jesus Transfiguration. few moments of quiet. Let's think of the times when we've made excuses to get out of things that God wanted us to do, or when we've said or done things that were wrong. Let's come to the Lord, who is full of love and forgiveness, and tell him about those things. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives, Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. 
for behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For failing you, not only by what we do, but also by our thoughts and words. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For acting as if we were ashamed to belong to your dear Son, Jesus. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. Together we say, Father, we have failed you often and humbly ask your forgiveness. Help us so to live that others may see your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the God of love bring you back to himself. Forgive us all for all the things that we have done wrong and assure us of his everlasting love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So our reading this week comes from Luke chapter 9, beginning at verse 28. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter, John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said, Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, and not knowing what he was saying. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. Well, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Sometimes... 
it's hard to face another sermon on a passage that comes around every year. And this one can come around twice a year. So fresh eyes can be a bit of a challenge. Although this thing we've been exploring together, seeing things in the context of the disciples, plus the context of what comes before, particularly from verse 18, well, some interesting things come up. So first, Luke gets into the mind of Herod. Who is this Jesus? He's heard people say it's John the Baptist come back from the dead. Or it's Elijah, who was said not to have died, but ascended. Or maybe another one of those ancient men of God, which implies someone like Moses. Then a little later, and eight days before the events in our reading, a similar setting. Jesus praying alone with the disciples near him. He then asks them, who do people think I am? And they too repeat the rumours that Herod had also heard. John the Baptist, Elijah, uh, one of the others. Again, could be Moses. Peter knows you're the Messiah. And Jesus says, shh, don't breathe a word to anyone. And then he unveils the plan, death and resurrection, which we know the disciples didn't get. And let's face it, who can blame them? And then Luke jumps those eight days to what we now call the Transfiguration. But let's not call it that. Let's not call it anything. Too often a title can cause us to only read what we expect to read. But all the elements we've already described come together in this encounter. Jesus alone with his disciples praying. Elijah, Moses, okay, this time it was Moses. Mission reveal and the decision to tell no one. If we focus on the three disciples, it seems a strange or even stranger event. How do they know it's Elijah and Moses? And there's that odd description. It says, now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they'd stayed awake, they saw. And Peter's offer to put up three tents? Well, Luke suggests he didn't know what he was saying. And then the cloud, which was a sign that God was going to reveal himself, so very scary. And finally, everything goes straight back to normal. Weird? Dreamlike? Maybe. So what did Peter, James and John get out of all of this? That does seem the important thing. Yes, this moment seems to me to be about them. We're moving from deconstructing to constructing, building up the disciples. First, we know Elijah and Moses were definitely on their minds as possible contenders for Jesus, even though Peter claims he is the Messiah. But there the two great faith heroes are, standing with Jesus. So Jesus is definitely not either of them. Then they hear again the plan unveiled, chipping away at their stubbornness not to believe it. And then Peter's crazy idea to set up camp. Mm, I think this is about the uniqueness of Jesus' mission and the important role the disciples are to play. They're the ones to help Jesus, not the superheroes of the past. They're not staying. They have no part to play. It's going to be the chosen disciples. Uh, Jesus is already proving that. This event occurs between the sending of the 12 and then there's the sending of the 72, the disciples preparing the way for Jesus. Finally, the cloud and the voice. I've got to say that speaks for itself, doesn't it? This is the Messiah. But Jesus must know who he is, so it could only be for Peter, James and John. Over these weeks, we continue to follow the followers of Jesus. They will be at the heart of the divine plan, these ordinary people, but chosen. And we still are. Yes, I know. It's as unimaginable now as it was then that he should choose me, choose you. But it was just as unimaginable that he chose them and to give them and us visions of who he is, 
so that we might be better equipped to serve the divine plan. Lord, you have my heart And I will search for yours Jesus, take my life And lead me on Lord, you have my heart search for yours let me be to you a sacrifice and I will praise you Lord and I Bye.
So may the peace of the Lord Christ go with us wherever he may send us. May he guide us through the wilderness, protect us through the storm. May he bring us home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown us. May he bring us home rejoicing once again into our doors. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of us and remain with us now and forever. Amen. Valley with my Savior I will go Where the flowers bloom and the sweet waters flow Everywhere He leads me I will follow for one Walking in His footsteps till the race is won Follow Oh